In this series of videos, we're covering several steps to build the basics of Brick Breaker or an app similar to it. Uh, in this specific video, we're going to cover procedures, but not the procedures that we've seen before. There are two types of procedures. One performs a bunch of blocks, so it simply does them, and the other will perform blocks to give a result back, right? So when we use certain types of blocks, it will give us a value. So for example, if we want to get the width of the bar, the player's bar, as a procedure, it fits right there. So this green block gives us a value and now this procedure will give that value back to whoever calls that procedure. All right, and we're going to talk about what sorts of procedures do we need to write to get values back. All right, so when we think about our sprite, it might be advantageous to get certain values about that sprite. So let's take a look at an example diagram of our sprite. And we have our box, our bar, our paddle. And the four most common things we want to know about that sprite are the locations, the X and the Y, of each of the corners. So in order to get the top left corner, we'd have to have two procedures, top left x and top left y. One would get the x value and the other the y value. And we can repeat that for all of our corners. And so this allows us to call the procedure to get those values, which might often be used throughout our collision detection later, we'll see. And for other reasons, we might want the actual corner values of our sprite. Okay, so let's go through and set up our bar top left x. Okay, and we'll repeat or duplicate rather, and then we're gonna bar top left y. Right, so for every corner, we want one of these, okay? So our bar top left X and top left Y are fairly simple, right? They're already given to us. We're just building in the procedures to make it similar to the other points, right? So if we're gonna define procedures for all three other corners, we might as well use the top left corner as well. Right, so our X and our Y for our sprite are already representative of that top left corner. So simply getting those properties and setting them to the result will allow us to have them. Right? So where, where would we use a procedure like this? So for instance, if we wanted to compare our value to a top left or top right, we need to, we can make a temporary variable and give it a value for, let's say, we can compare to see if our temporary value, right, they have these little notches, and we'll notice that our procedures, just like when we define our do type of procedure, our resultant procedures show up as well, but they have the notches. So they have to go in blocks that also have those notches. So we could simply compare something like our variable to the top left X. And all this does is perform all the blocks and return the result. So this will compare four to whatever our sprites X value is. And so that's how we would use these procedures. So let's go through and set up the other procedures. So we have top left X, 
top right x top right y we're going to leave them blank we're going to set them all up and then fill them out all right bottom left x bottom left y bottom right x and bottom right y all right so this gets our points x y for each of those corners all right so we have a procedure to get our top left x and our top left y and then we want a procedure to get the x and y for each of the other points as well Right, so if we think about the top right x, we're going to be on the same y, okay, but we're all the way over here. So we have to add the full width of the sprite to the normal xy value. Okay, so to get the top right x, we take our math block and we want to start at our normal x, but we're going to add the entire width of the sprite, the bar or the paddle. Right? So that is our top right and our y doesn't go up or down. Right? We are on the same level, right? so we just use the same y value. Okay, So those are our top corners, and now we can use our bottom corners. And so our bottom left x, if we think about our diagram again, we're now doing this bottom left corner and our x stays the same as our top left x. We're on the same x value. Okay, So we just want the x value for our bottom left, but our bottom left y, let's capitalize that y, is going to be slightly different. So we have the y here and we want to add the height of our sprite right to move down to the bottom left corner okay so we can duplicate our block that did addition before but instead of x we're doing y now and instead of width we're adding height so now we've done our bottom left x and our bottom left y, right? We gotta start at the normal y and we add a full height to our location. Now our bottom right takes into account both movements, right? So we're not only going to move across a full width, we're also going to move down a full height. All right, so our x will move across We start at our normal x, we add a full width, and then our y starts at our normal y, but adds a full height. So the xy location shows up a full width across and a full height down. So then we end up in our bottom right location. So these would be the setup for our eight procedures that are four corners, an X and a Y value for each of the corners in our sprite. And we're going to use these to simplify are thinking about our collision detection or whether values 
are around our sprite. Right? And we've showed how to use them in a comparison 